When we built our garage apartment house a few months ago, our plan was that eventually, when we built our forever house next door, this would become my shop space. So we wanted it to be as open as possible for later when I had workbenches and tool carts, but that also meant that we didn't want to build out a closet. I thought living here for a year or two without a closet wouldn't be a big deal. We got one of those cheap plastic clothes racks from Walmart and had a few boxes a piece, kind of situated where they were easy to dig through. I thought that would be okay. But one week in, we were both already sick of the mess, and you could literally see the piles of clothes and shoes from anywhere in the house because, well, it's all open. So I decided to do something about it and built these fun modern closet cabinets to organize and hide all of our clothes and shoes. They're not fancy, but they match the exact style we were going for in our home with a simple modern natural wood look. And they can house just about every piece of clothing we own, which is the main thing here. So if you're living in a home with little to no closet space, or maybe you just have more clothes than you know what to do with, I'll show you how I built these. I've got the downloadable plans available on my website at the link in the description below. There are actually two plans in one. One of these was built with rods for hanging clothes and the other was built with adjustable shelves and a shoe rack. The cabinets are the same size, the only difference is what's on the inside. I've included details on both of these in the plans. But enough backstory, let's get building. The base for these closet cabinets was made out of 2x2s, so the first thing I did was cut down the 2x2s to the sizes I would need to build the bases. Once my 2x2s were cut down to the right sizes, I assembled the frames using glue and 2.5 inch wood screws. Because I was painting these bases, I didn't really care that the screws were showing, so I just like puttied over them and puttied all the joints and sanded really good before I painted. However, if you're going to stain these, you might want to do uh, like pocket holes and screws or dowels instead to assemble your frames. These frames are very, very basic, just four legs and then four, like what I like to call stretchers, that go between all the four legs to hold them all together. Just a very, very, very simple base. You can find all the dimensions for these bases and the entire closet cabinets in the link in the description below. Once the frames were assembled, I just puttied all the joints, puttied the screw holes, sanded, and then I painted. And while the paint was drying, I moved on to building the cabinets. You can see that my shop dog Lucy likes to get involved in the puttying process. She's a little more in the way than helpful, but I don't mind the company. I built my cabinets 18 inches deep, so I cut down on my plywood. Again, all of the dimensions and everything you need to know are in the plans and the link in the description below. But once my plywood was all cut down, I drilled 3 quarter inch pocket holes into the pieces of the cabinet that were going to be the top and the bottom and also the middle shelf. Now, depending on what kind of cabinet you're building, whether or not you're building the one that has the hanging clothes or the one with the shelves and the shoe rack, this will depend on where your middle shelf will go. For the cabinet with the hanging clothes, I put the shelf directly in the middle of the cabinet. However, for the cabinet with the shelves and the shoe rack, I put it a little bit off center so that it would allow me a little bit more space for my shoe rack. You'll see that later. Um, it might make more sense when you see it instead of explaining it now. One thing to note that I didn't even think about before I started building these is that it's probably a good idea to attach these to your wall so that they don't have a tendency to tip over or become unstable. But if you add a one by board or a piece of scrap, plywood scrap at the top, you can use that piece to screw through to attach to the studs in your wall. That'll keep the um, closet cabinet from having a tendency to tip over. Besides the middle shelf location, one thing that's a little bit different between the hanging clothes closet cabinet and the adjustable shelf and shoe rack closet cabinet is the um, shelf pins. So if you want adjustable shelves in your shelf cabinet, you'll need to drill shelf pin holes and I recommend doing this before you have it in a vertical position. It's a lot easier to drill them now when it's kind of laid down on its side without the back on. I use my Craig shelf pin jig to drill shelf pins all along up and down both sides of the cabinet. 
That way I can add adjustable shelves in anywhere I want later when I get to putting my clothes in and seeing how much space that I need. Once the cabinet was assembled and all the shelf pin holes had been drilled if necessary, it's time to attach the cabinet to the base. I centered my cabinet carcass onto the base like shown and just attached into the wood base using one and a quarter inch wood screws. Once the cabinet was securely attached to the base, it was time to add a quarter inch backer. I made sure that my cabinet was nice and square before attaching the backer and just attached the quarter inch plywood backer using brad nails and my nail gun. Once the cabinet is securely attached to the base, it's time to start making the doors. For these doors, again, there's a small difference between the closet with the hanging clothes versus the closet with the adjustable shelves. For the closet with the hanging clothes, I simply made a door. I just cut it from plywood, added a little edge bending, drilled my holes for my concealed hinges, and attached using those hinges. That was it. But for the cabinet with the adjustable shelves, I added a shoe rack to hold some of our shoes onto the door. So if you're building the adjustable shelf cabinet, follow the following steps, and I'll show you how to build that shoe rack. But if you're building the one with the hanging clothes, at this point, you're pretty well done. Add your doors and move on. To make the shoe shelf, I used 1x4 lumber, wood glue, and my nail gun to assemble a very basic shelf, just like shown. I made sure that the shelves were far enough apart that I could fit a pair of shoes in between them. If not, this is pretty well useless. So make sure your shoes will fit between your shelves before you attach everything. Once my shelves were attached, I added one by two pieces on the front side of each shelf to keep the shoes from falling forward. One thing to note is that my shoe shelf was so wide that I had to cut out a spot for the hinge or else it would be touching the hinge and the door wouldn't close all the way. So I traced around where my hinge would be located on the shoe shelf and cut this area out with my jigsaw. Once I made sure everything was going to fit well, I added two slats onto the back side of the shoe shelf, one at the top and one at the bottom. This is so that I can attach the shoe shelf onto the back of the door. I used one and a quarter inch wood screws to attach this shelf onto the back of the door and then attach the door onto the cabinet. Once I had my doors installed on both of the cabinets, I used a one and a quarter inch poplar dowel as a closet rod for my clothes hanging cabinet. I screwed these in using two and a half inch wood screws from each side of the cabinet. You could also use closet rod hanging hardware if you wanted. Then I added adjustable shelves using shelf pins and the shelf pin holes that we drilled earlier and filled both the closets with all of my clothes. It is so much nicer and cleaner and prettier to have all of my clothes off the floor and out of cardboard boxes and into these nice wooden cabinets. What's really cool about these cabinets is that when we build our new house next door and this becomes my shop space, I can just take these cabinets with me and put them in my new closet. So if you're ready to get building, be sure to check out the plans in the link in the description below and be sure to check out my YouTube videos and my website www.woodshopdiaries.com for plenty more do-it-yourself projects. Thanks for watching.